Good morning. Bolangi. Welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so glad to have you here with us today. And we're glad you could join us from wherever you are on the second Sunday of Advent. We pray that as you worship with us today, that God will fill you with much needed peace. We have a few announcements to start today. There will be communion during our worship service today. So we invite you to take a moment and go get your bread and juice so that you can participate with us later in the service. One of the favorite things that people like to do at this time of year is Christmas caroling. But that's something that's harder to do with social distancing. But we still want it to be part of our Christmas experience. So we're inviting you to send in a video of you or your family singing a Christmas carol. We will edit it together so that everyone can enjoy some good caroling. If you would like to send in a video, please send it to Geary in the office. During this surge in the number of COVID cases, we are not having any in-person meetings. So there will be no Tuesday morning or Wednesday evening Bible study at this time. But during Advent, Pastor Bill will be putting on an Advent devotion every week online. These will be on hope, peace, joy, and love. This will be on our Facebook page and we'll send you a link each week. Don't forget, we still need pictures for our selfie directory. If you need more instructions, our Family Ties newsletter has those, or you can call Geary at the office. It will be good to see all of your smiling faces again. And finally, please remember, be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Show people you love them by keeping your distance. And pray for the day when we can all be back together again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May 
We now ask you to quiet your hearts as Gary Up leads us in our prelude. Amen. Amen. where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe. But we want to be able to enjoy the season, too. We've got work to do, to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend relationships, and to prepare for the one that is coming. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us. We pray that we will be able to clear the way for God to come and dwell with us, bringing peace and healing. We light these candles in faith that Jesus, our Emmanuel, our Prince of Peace, is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please join in singing verses one and two of Good Christian Men Rejoice.
is this?
small mouse, and tired donkey. They all welcomed him to the warmth of their state. That cold winter's night, beneath the star's light, a little one came for the world. Would you please bow your heads in prayer? God of hope and peace, we come to you today as people who are waiting, waiting in the darkness for the birth of a child, a child who will guide us by his light. We light candles and we pray, and we feel your presence here in our midst. We ask today that you walk with us, guide us, show us the way to be your children, to be lights in the darkness, warmth in the cold, welcome in dark times. Help us to remember that there is no way to peace, but rather that peace is the way. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we have failed to show your love, have failed to be the hope and peace that we would like to see in the world. Give us your mercy and help us to return to your ways. Merciful God, we pray that you would be with all of those now who feel that they are living in darkness. We pray for all of those who are suffering, all those in need of healing, all those who feel lonely and isolated. We pray for those who are worried about their jobs and about having enough. We pray for those essential workers who are stressed out and exhausted from all their work they do to help us all. We pray for those who continue to seek justice and equality. We pray for those whose lives have been devastated by natural disasters. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who feel like they have lost all hope. We pray that you would bring your peace and healing to all of those places where there seems to be none. Dear God, all of our lives have been touched in some way with darkness and sadness Hear us now, O oh God, as we silently offer you those prayers that are closest to our hearts. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray now for the members of our own congregation. We pray especially for Paul Denning, Diana Johnson, Benjamin Ahn, Sae, Maggie Porter, and all those who have COVID. We pray that in this time of separation, that you would hold us together in love as a church in your healing embrace. We thank you, God, 
for your presence with us. We thank you for sending us your Son to bring light into our dark world. Guide us in your ways that your light may shine in us. Thank you, God. Amen. And now will you join in saying that prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. ดุนีนี่ใส่ว่ามีทัศน์สกุลตามมีทัศน์ตัวเล็บหน้าหุ่นมาลูบ่าวในพระเพวิชาสุดลุยซีสมุดเดือดเลือดสิเตอร์นี
They had been exiled in Babylon for 50 years, a length of time longer than their ancestors had wandered in the wilderness with Moses. God had not forgotten them, and God was saving them again. According to Isaiah, they would not be trudging through desert wasteland. Their return would be a blessed pilgrimage on a straight and level highway. The people are filled with hope as they look forward to their freedom and finding their way home. Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort my people, says our God. Comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them full for all their sins. A voice cries out, prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. And then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all humankind will see it. And the Lord himself has promised this. A voice cries out, proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim, I ask? Proclaim that humankind is like grass. They last no longer than wildflowers. Grass withers and flowers fade. But the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, the grass withers and fades. But the word of God endures forever. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion. Announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Jerusalem that their God is coming. The sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Highways in biblical days and today connect people and cultures. Think for a moment about the importance of highways for Israel. They shaped Israel's history perhaps more than any other single factor. Wealth and power flowed through those ancient highways and trade routes. The King's Road, which connected Heliopolis, which is modern-day Cairo, to Damascus, literally put Israel on the map as spices, gold, and fabrics. Olive oil flowed through the great caravans. Unfortunately, enemy armies traveled the highway as well. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, and Rome all desired the strategic advantage that came with conquering Palestine. It was a perilous and wondrous journey that traversed the Sinai Desert, wound through ravines and across mountain ranges. People on those caravans would fight heat, thirst, stubborn candles, candles, camels, and bandits along the way. So much of the biblical story happened on and along the king's road. David's power and prominence came from conquering cities to the east and to the north, gaining control of the sections of the king's highway. For a few decades, tiny Israel shared the wealth and power of the great empires because they controlled the highway. Mary and Joseph fled to Egypt on this road. Paul is converted through his vision of Jesus on his way to Damascus. Jesus called, talked of the dangers on the stretch of the highway between Jerusalem and Jericho, where a Samaritan helps an unfortunate traveler beaten and left for dead. In Acts, we read of the good news traveling up the road to Samaria and down towards Gaza as Philip met with a high-ranking eunuch from Ethiopia. Isaiah imagines a highway that will connect people, not to other people, but will connect them to God. And when he talks of making a highway in the desert and seeing every valley lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low, the uneven ground 
shall become level and the rough places plain. Perhaps he has made the journey on the king's highway himself, or at least he has heard of the tales of the travel, because he understands that this highway does lead through a desert, a wilderness. As he thinks about this, he reflects there are times when a dry spirituality separates us from a loving God. This road connects us to God. As the people would return to Jerusalem, they would be again, be reunited with God. Isaiah says, prepare the way of the Lord. And he uses the image of preparing and building a road to illustrate the connection that we have with God. When I was a young boy, I remember the highway department preparing the way for Interstate 94. For years, hills were leveled and low places raised up. Unfortunately, neighborhoods all the way from downtown St. Paul to Minneapolis were split apart as homes were torn down and removed to make way for the highway. But for a long time, big mach machinery dug away and carved out what looked like a huge canyon just to the north and to the east of the church. Gradually, First Baptist Church stood alone on the edge of a monstrous hole. The ground at the base of the hole was smoothed over and the road began to take shape. The retaining walls were built on the side to hold back the earth. Gravel was laid down and the concrete poured into what would become several lanes of freeway. The preparation for the road took time. It had to be right, done right. It had to be done well in order to support the tons of cars and trucks that would pass over it. Isaiah told his people to prepare. Prepare the way to be connected to their Lord again. And he used the powerful image of strong arms that would defend the people. But those same arms, in those same arms, God would also gather his lambs and gently lead them. The people's job was to prepare, was to prepare for this mighty and merciful arrival. In this season of Advent, we are to prepare for the coming of the Prince of Peace. We need to prepare our minds, our hearts, our souls to welcome our Savior, Jesus, at Christmas. We need to remove those things that are in the way of receiving our Lord, of welcoming Jesus. In road preparation, stones need to be physically removed. From our minds, we need to consciously clear out anger and disagreeable thoughts in order that they may be replaced by the gifts of the Spirit, holiness, and forgiveness. This is how we discover and find ourselves at peace. Roads need leveling. We need to smooth out bitter and jealous feelings from our hearts and replace these things with kindness and compassion in order to find ourselves divinely peace-filled. We need to quiet our souls and humbly place ourselves in God's presence in order to receive the peace that passes understanding. The quieting of our souls is an activity in stark contrast to the busyness of our usual Christmas preparations. But these are simple, but they are important things that we can do to prepare for the coming of Christ, to prepare to receive the peace of Christ during this Advent season. And as we receive the peace of Christ, we also become the peace of Christ in our world. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. May you have a merry preparing. Our loving God, thank you. Thank you that you have come and that we can celebrate your presence with us. We have heard these words, hope and now peace. Lord, we know that there is nothing that the world needs more than those two things. Help us to prepare, help us to receive, and help us to know your presence. We would know your peace, O oh, loving God. Amen. Our next carol is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's number 106 in our book, and we'll do verses 1 and 3.
took the bread. This is my body broken for you. My blood is shed. Remember this, my children, whenever you partake. Remember me, my children, and do it for my sake. And then he took a bowl of wine, gave thanks and passed it round. This is the cup of promise, wherever it be found. Remember this, my children, whenever you partake. Remember me, my children, and do it for my sake. disciples for the last time and he said this is my body broken for you my blood shed for you every time you do this you do it remembering me we have been given this reminder of Christ's presence with us all eat all of it ดีนี้เราสิก็ออดาเลฮาอวิดอฮินิลอคอรอสเตรตาบุกุลออมุสัยวาลนะตุยนะนะปุยพะเตเตปาปุอินิบายอลเตติสุญะลุลอเฮว